contra integrals may depend on the path, not only on the endpoint of the path. In some cases, though, so when the path has an interderivative, the integral only depends on the endpoint, and you can use this antiderivative to compute its value. So how do we do that? Well, you know from uh, antiderivatives from real single value pro calculus. So what does this mean in the complex setting? And how do you use it to compute uh, the uh, integrals in, this, in that case? That's what you will learn in this video. So we have a theorem for that. Uh, if f is continuous in domain d, then what is the antiderivative of f? Well, that antiderivative is called capital F of z, and that is an antiderivative of if the derivative of capital F equals a small f for all z in d. That's what we will call an antiderivative, exactly the same as in the real case. And notice that uh, this capital F of z is automatically uh, analytic in d because uh, its derivative exists at small f. Now we have a theorem which contains three statements, and those statements are equivalent, which means that if one of them is true, all three of them are true. We will use the theorem, we will defer the proof to a separate video. So it's a theorem, it says, well, if f has an antiderivative throughout d, then the contra integral only depends on start and end point, and equals capital F in the endpoint minus capital F in the start point, and consequently, if you have some closed contour uh, inside D, then the contour integral will be zero. So, how does it work? Well, here we have an example. Uh, we have f of z small of, uh, f of z equals e to the power pi z. Then we know an antiderivative, e to the power pi z over pi, because if you differentiate capital F, you get small f. Uh, we can use this antiderivative to compute, for example, this integral over here from i to i over 2. Path is not specified, but that doesn't matter because our function has an antiderivative and uh, the integral is just the antiderivative in endpoint minus antiderivative in starting point, as we compute over here. e to the power i pi over 2 is just i, and e to the power i pi equals minus 1, so we get i minus minus 1, i plus 1, divided by pi as our integral. Second example. Suppose we take f of z equals 1 over z squared. And now, pay attention, domain will be all of c except for the origin. Yes, of course, uh, because in the origin our f of z doesn't even exist. Then we have a capital F and the derivative minus 1 over z, which exists everywhere uh, uh, except for 0. So then the theorem tells us that if you take any contour uh, in c, as long as you do not go through the origin, then your integral will be zero. Doesn't matter which contour you take, you may go around the origin, or as long as you do not go through the origin. But what about then the 1 over z in defined in all of c except for zero? Because we saw in an earlier example that the contour integral along the unit circle going around the origin yielded 2 pi i, was not equal to zero. Why is that? Because also this function um, has an antiderivative, capital log of z. So why isn't the contour integral along closed curve zero? Well, this capital log of z has a, a branch cut somewhere. Or if you take an, any log of z, uh, you have a branch point at zero and you have a branch point at infinity. I have to connect those points. So no matter how you connect them, like this or like that or like that, you will always uh, intersect your unit circle. So it is not possible to define your antiderivative through all of d. Uh, so that's why the theorem doesn't apply in this case. And we already knew that because the integral along a closed curve is not equal to zero. So yes, this theorem is pretty nice. So if you can find antiderivatives, you can compute. Uh, Integrals along curves, integrals along closed curves are zero. Uh, but you still have to be a bit careful uh, in the one over z case because a log z arises, so there you have to put your branch cut somewhere. 